Hi. In this video demonstration, we're going to take a look at uh, modeling some of those uh, other strange and pesky bits uh, of a character. Uh, we've done eyes. Uh, now let's talk about ears. Uh, and, uh, you know, any reference that you can use uh, will always help, but our ears are about as different as fingerprints. Uh, no two are alike. So we're going to go ahead and try to model a fairly average uh, human ear. First things first, I'm going to go ahead and create a plane for my reference here. Uh, move over to the Modify tab, and, and we'll make a, a rather large ear, and then we can always shrink it down. Uh, and we'll go with maybe 100 over 100 in our length and width. And then I'm going to zero everything out here. And since I've got 100 over 100, if I just want to kind of uh, line up my scene, I can say 50 up in the Z and maybe uh, 75 in Y. I'll get it away from my grid, and that'll kind of leave me with a place to work. Uh, ears are fairly relatively uh, flat in shape, so we only need the, the front view of the ear in order to make sure that we're kind of on track. Uh, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and make a material. Just a regular diffuse map and load in uh, the, one, of the, one of the drawings that I did for this ear here. Ear one, that'll work. I'm just going to back out, turn on Show Shaded Material in Viewport, and assign it to the plane. I'm going to right-click on that plane, go to Object Properties, turn off Renderability, uh, Show Frozen in Gray, and then go ahead and freeze it. So that that's now not in my way, and I can't click on it and move it around or anything strange like that. I think uh, I will start, uh, we'll turn on Shaded Mode here, and probably turn off the grid in my front viewport. I think I will start with uh, something like a, a box, uh, just a little one, and we're going to put that right about there. So we got a little, just a little bit of a uh, box there. I might even move it back towards the plane just a little so that we don't get too far off, and too far away. Uh, and then I'm going to take that box and I'm going to right click on it and convert it to an edible poly. The back side of this box uh, I'm not going to need, so I'm going to kind of just delete it. Uh, including like the under polygon underneath there. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I'll need that either. I'm going to leave the top one for now because we're going to kind of do a trick probably that will help us save some time. And I'm just going to kind of go to my vertex subobject selection, grab a couple of these, and kind of pull them out to start making this shape uh, a little bit rounder and match my, my drawing here a little bit more. Maybe kind of pull that over or something like that. Then I'll turn my sub-object off, and what I'm going to do is, uh, just to get this, uh, this shape of this, uh, this C shape here a little quicker, I'm going to draw a curve. We're going to go to our, our shapes, draw a spline. And I'm just going to kind of click, and then click and drag to get that curve out there, and then we'll go around the ear best way we can, and maybe end it right around there. Alright, so I'll right click and now I've got my curve. Then come back to my modify tab, select my polygons. And uh, from here we can kind of do uh, just the extrude along spline and get this shape uh, pretty quickly in this case. The extrude along spline is found here under the edit polys. I'm going to go ahead and click the settings button next door to it. Uh, and our little drop down or our pop up will show up here. The first thing is this, uh, this little line shape down here that allows us to click and then select our spline. So already you can see kind of gives us the shape that we're looking for. Uh, I want to kind of start thinking about this interior as I do this. So this next uh, this this value up here we can increase to kind of get some some more segments uh, and uh, try to you know line some of them up so that we can uh, create a solid shape without going too heavy in the polys at this point. But also we want to we want to make sure that this this shape here uh, can has a place to connect for our, our Y shaped ear and all that stuff. Once I'm finished, I'll just go ahead and click OK. Uh, I can actually get rid of that line now. I don't need it, so I'll just delete it for right now. And we're off to a not so terrible start. A couple of ways that we can kind of continue on and, 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 and do this. Uh, we can start by coming back out to our, our view here. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can kind of build around the back of the ear by selecting one of those edges uh, and then maybe kind of whoa, loop it around, hold down shift something not working right there I'm hitting something wrong 
Ah, there's our problem. I've got polygons everywhere. So I can select this uh, this one that did come along with it. That's the one thing about extruding along a, a spline is it's going to make you a polygon along the back edge as well. If I hold down shift and click, I should get all of those guys. Uh, looks like I got more than I bargained for, so I can either hold down alt and unselect or undo and hold down control to select. I don't want to get rid of all those because I'm not going to need those. Back to our edges here. If I select one of these guys and kind of loop it around, we get the whole back edge of that ear. And I can kind of just, uh, you know, pull it out. Maybe even get my scale tool here and kind of pull uh, the back of that ear uh, in a little bit. And that gives us our first kind of round out shape going on there. Uh, we can manipulate slightly here where things are at. Make sure that we don't end up with. Uh, kind of a mess up there and just kind of do a little bit of repair from our quick scale thing going on. Alright, so there's our first uh, shape in the ear. Uh, the next one will, will kind of come into our, our inner ear here. We can kind of build out from here and here and kind of zoom in and around. We'll just want to loop it up around towards that inner part of the ear where the, where the hole is. So let's kind of select this guy. I think we can kind of do the same thing. If we select one edge and hold loop, we can get all of them in there. And then hold down shift and extrude down. And uh, that'll give us a good place to begin our ear there. Might even be able to hold, hold shift and extrude down again. And this time maybe kind of use our scale tool to push that back into that... Uh, that kind of C-shaped loop that we've got, which will kind of give us an undercut under our ear there. Then I'll probably select the the shape, not the shape, the edge that I've got woo, nice and tucked away in here. Uh, here, there we go, and start to extrude and maybe scale, and maybe even rotate to fit the top part of my nice Y shape here that goes down the ear. And we can always adjust polygons and vertices here later as well. So I'm just going to kind of quickly uh, pull these shapes around and match them up. And we'll have to add some more edges in here in order to get this shape looking fairly good. But that will give us a good place to start. We should bring that around just a little. There we go. And every time you see me extruding an edge, all I'm doing is holding shift and dragging down. And then I grab the, the vertices individually here. We can kind of we don't have to follow our, our our drawing super exactly. But what I do kind of want to re retain is uh, you know about the same number of polygons as my outer ear here. So uh, I know we're gonna have a few extra, but uh, we will need to tame this eventually. Even line up to the middle so I can quickly and easily connect to cut in an edge there. There. To there. To there. That's a good start. And then another one down to about there. You can always add more. It's easier to add more edges than it is to have to go back in and, and take them away. Maybe here. That gives us a good starting shape, at least. And then I want to kind of loop these guys up. Maybe even get them a little closer so that we've got more to work with in here where we get all these meeting curves and shapes. Okay, I might go ahead and take these two and actually cut in an edge so that there's a match for that one up there that in. Everything gradually that we can get. And uh, same idea. There's, I see a bit of a hidden curve poking out there. We can we can pull this out and down. Maybe even meet it up just about like that. From our perspective view, all I'm doing is Alt-W to back out. I want to select both of these. Maybe get my weld tools. You know, pump up the weld threshold by one. Maybe we can 
uh, weld those together. Back and forth, front to perspective. We'll be working and doing that a lot, so I kind of jump back and forth to, to really see if I've got it lined up okay, so that then I can just hit that weld. And uh, we've got the first part of our interior structure ready to go there. Okay, uh, let's see, we can try to round these out just a little bit more since we do kind of want this to kind of come up and curve in on top of itself. Maybe just uh, divot down here and then pop right back up later on. Move you up and out of the way there a little too. That should work. Uh, one and maybe two. We'll see, we might cut in an extra one in there uh, somewhere to get some, some extra shape. Here we are. Pull this back a little bit. We don't need you all the way hanging out there. All right. Uh, from here, we can uh, really kind of start to refine where our ear is going to change from one shape to another. So I'm going to kind of pull these uh, maybe out and around, uh, rotate them slightly, and pull down. And uh, then we can start uh, maybe kind of connecting uh, the in betweens. Uh, we might even Go ahead and grab here and leave that one alone. Here, all the way through the middle. You can grab the polygons even as well. And uh, I know I want these lifted up like a hill rather than a valley, so I'll just move them up a little bit towards the outside of that shape there. Everything else will kind of divot in uh, as we go there. And maybe this guy here. Maybe I'll, I'll ring to grab this one and this one and add in one more connection there just so that I can pull that down so that that undercut doesn't get uh, lost. There, see, we start to get polygons on top of polygons, which is why this, uh, this is a little bit more difficult than people uh, realize. Organic shapes are uh, twisty and turny and curvy. And there we have it. Okay, decent place to start. Oops, I messed up my front view. I'll put that back. Let's turn this to shaded so that we can not get those shadows in the way too badly. All right. We can start by bringing these down and trying to figure out our connection there. Uh, or we can kind of fill in the blanks. It's really kind of up to you. Uh, well, you're the artist. You're probably supposed to be the expert in anatomy here as well. If you haven't done any research on this, uh, I recommend taking a look at ears. Let's get a little quiet. There we go. We're starting to, to shape these things out here now. Uh, at about this point, I'll just start with these three. We can always kind of come back in here later. Uh, and I'm going to kind of start pulling those out and maybe even grab my scale tool here and start to flatten those out where that ear is supposed to connect uh, with our head. Uh, it's got to get a little flat in between the areas of the curve here. And we'll rotate. And, uh, maybe even start to create some shape that broadens out from there. Less lines you have stuck close together, the uh, flatter or smoother your shape can start to look. Right. I might go ahead and just kind of pull down here, and then we can kind of use this to, to curve on the into into the inside of that ear. Uh, we can kind of pull all the way down, out, and around. And eventually, we'll want to kind of connect these two. Uh, so I can kind of bring the in. Maybe we can even just, just start with uh, some of the smaller details here. And out. And start to see where these things are going to connect. And I might be able to grab those two and use bridge to just kind of close the gap but I am going to want to come back in here with these two, cut in something a little extra, and remember that I'm going to need kind of a valley in there, so I'll just pull it back. At this point, you might even want to add uh, a mesh smooth to your model so you can see how the shape's starting to uh, come about. We're not doing too bad. Now we've got that uh, portion here that's going to end up defining our earlobe. We can kind of come in here and start finishing that up. Uh, from about, let's say... This is where 
the artistic kind of preference just takes over a little bit and we have to make some decisions where we want to start connecting these things. I could go right in here, kind of pull that down, and then even select that uh, those two and bridge those to close that gap in there. Again, test my mesh smooth, and that gives me kind of that folded up and down uh, in there. I keep doing this to my front view. I want to come back out to my perspective. There we go. Decent place to start. And then we can start, uh, you know, looping these earlobes uh, even a little bit. Oh. Maybe out. I don't want to go too far. Scale those up just a bit. Just to get kind of a, a change in shape, we can go from there. And maybe here, just to give us that kind of basic shape that we're getting there now. Beginning of our earlobe. So we've got, uh, you know, the structure is fairly well laid out at this point. Uh, from here, we might uh, kind of try to curve this back into our uh, our C here, so we could take this and, and maybe even this guy here. I don't want to bridge that yet. I do want to kind of drop some of this stuff down. So maybe I could take this edge, this edge, and this edge, and just kind of pull it down, turn off my mesh so I can see what the heck I'm doing to where it meets those corners and start welding. Weld right away because if you don't you're gonna probably end up with a, a rather disastrous mess in the end. But we want to bring some of this undercut at the edge here and back out so we can flatten it again. We'll see. As, our gear, as ears are very organic shapes uh, we can uh, we can run into some fun and ridiculous issues as we come along here. Sometimes it can be hard to see what we've got going on in here. Just select the polygon here and there just to... And it looks like we can pull from there to get that undercut back out. This is not one of those exact recipe sciences. You're going to be playing with different ears, different individual pieces for quite a while, just, just looking at them if you do it right. And it looks like we've got one more piece that I failed to bring out there at the beginning. So we'll do it here now. And sometimes get in between that. A guide that we've put together there can be a pain in the butt too. I want to switch back to vertex mode since I know that one of these has to meet up maybe about there. Remember that in perspective what looks like it might be right on top of something is not always. So we get close enough and then try to weld them. And uh, you I need to come up around there. And if I can get close enough, you can always raise the weld threshold if you need to, if that's giving you fits. And we've got where our start of this thing should be. I can actually maybe even grab it by the border and cap it and use uh, some things like connect to grab two different vertexes and just cut in some edges there. One, two, three at the top. We've only got two here. Uh, so we might want to uh, reorganize a little bit at this point, kind of bring some of these maybe over here. I can even just grab these two edges here and add another edge by hitting connect. That'll allow us to make some some decent choices as to where we can uh, connect these things.
find my cut tool. Remember, I want to I make sure I'm watching this uh, icon. So if I roll over an edge, it'll get long, elongated on one side. If I roll over a polygon, it gets fat on all sides. And if I roll over a vertex, it gets skinny on all sides. They're short. But now I can kind of cut to here, to that edge, and then maybe up to that vertex. I'm going to get some tries in here doing it that way, but that's not, that's not too bad. That's okay. And then uh, I'll probably want to really kind of make sure that that valley dips down. I'm going to pull the one back up for our undercut. Uh, and if I do want a quad there, you know, I can always kind of maybe remove that. It's still a four sided, giving us that shape. Not too bad. And then following suit here, I might want to actually uh, unselect this. I want to pull my ear a little farther away from that plane. It's getting in the way. Let me see in behind here. See what we did behind here in the bottom, we're going to do for the rest. Uh, I can actually just kind of grab, grab, holding control, and clicking. Pull down shift and extrude that edge out. Every time you see me extrude an edge out, that's just what I'm doing. I'm holding down shift and pulling. And with all those edges selected, I can kind of try and get in here and get those ones that I kind of hid behind my undercut. And then hopefully all we have to do is bridge them. If I did the right count, which maybe I didn't. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. where I said we, we, we made this kind of cut in between here uh, so I am I'm gonna have to cut in so I grab all those guys to connect and now I've got one two three and enough to enough to grab those now I can even grab just a couple at a time make sure I get the right edge and bridge and that'll help one one bridge. And even for this last one that's already kind of connected, we know we'll have a four-sided, so I'll go to border and just cap it. Alright, turn on our mesh where we can start to see that our hills and valleys are forming fairly nicely. Um, grab this just to see it's a six edge, so we'll have some, some work to do for that one. And I'm just going to go over and do the same thing. I'm going to pull down by holding shift to extrude that edge. This is sculpting. This is polygon modeling for this stuff. There are some other tools nowadays. Uh, sculpting tools like Mudbox or ZBrush that might allow you to do this a little bit more uh, fluidly or painterly. You even have things like vector displacement that uh, you can set up and just kind of paint an ear onto the side of a head. This is where it all started, so we'll start keep going from here. Now I got a four sided so I can cap it there. Alright. Hills and valleys, we're starting to look like a little bit more like an ear. Uh, we may decide that, you know, uh, to cut some more edges in here just to make that uh, valley a little bit more prominent. We may, may not. Uh, we'll we'll go with this for right now and see how it how it handles. Pull that back up a little bit. We can actually just define a little bit more. Uh, we may even decide to uh, ring all the way around here and add in uh, not there, not there. Some more edges just to get that to kind of puff out or fan out there. Bring these kind of up a little bit more. We can kind of try and, and, and mold these in here. If we go up and down and out and around. Our 
caps. We can, we can bring out this, this valley in here that's going to eventually kind of come in to our, the hole in our heads and our ears there. Oh, didn't mean to do that. All right, let's get back to where we were here at the beginning. Make sure everything's kind of going smoothly. Uh, I'd straighten this out. Now I think I want to kind of put it back a little bit. It's a little nicer. Alt X every now and then just to see that your vertices aren't all over the place, maybe. And uh, let's kind of just start pulling some of these others out to where they're going to meet. Uh, get this edge down here, I might just kind of bridge and we can cut in some edges later. I know I'm going to need at least two for, for this thing. I can grab those two, connect, and maybe even use chamfer with only one segment to split that thing apart. Pull those over. I'm probably down there. Okay. And we can try just bridging things in here. This is really kind of just uh, take a look and see what you can get as far as shapes are concerned. Maybe we can bridge that, and that should be four edges, so we can cap that thing. Every now and then, turn back on your mesh smooth, and maybe even adjust some of the valleys and hills a little bit further to your liking. To really try to get the shapes that those ears can really have. There's our Y shape appearing out of there. Not too bad. Okay, so the hole in our head is going to kind of come up and hit in here. So we're trying to just kind of always kind of maintain some, some semblance of that edge flow uh, and gradually curve everything uh, to meet in up and together here. Bridge there. Let's turn that off so we can see what we're doing a little bit better. Bridge there. And then we're going to realize that we might need some extra work. Even to bridge these two, we can connect. See that ring takes us all the way around? We can go ahead and connect through those. Woo! My mouse wheel is a little sensitive there today. There we go. And that gives us a couple to uh, worry about. And we can successfully maybe bridge in here. And bridge in here. We're starting to get there. We want to pronounce that, that inner ear there shape. A little bit more, we can always grab those polygons and pull up. More of an extreme, and then towards the ends, maybe we just start gracefully declining them. There we go. Back to our front view, and so we can start to see that this is where, punk, right into there. In fact, that might be a good place to add that hole. So I'll just delete that polygon, four edges, and I might even just pull it straight in to the head and forward a bit. Forward and down. That'll be on the inside of the skull anyway, so it won't matter terribly. All right.
So bump up that. We can start to see. what we have going here. A little bit. There we go. Not too bad. Alright, we're off to a good start. Let's keep going. This may take you a lot longer to get this ear right than we're spending on it here today. Uh, cause I'm trying to, I'm trying to hurry this along so that the tutorial doesn't last for forever and a day. At about this point, we're going to want to start bringing these valleys up because here the, the undercut ends and it becomes, uh, flatter up in here. I might actually even bring some of these guys up. And we can start leveling them out a little bit more. Even uh, welding some of these together, uh, we might get some tries, but that's okay. I grab those two, and we grab this, and we can crank that up a little. And then these two should follow suit. There we go. Let's just see what happens here if I if I do it for these two as well. And that's where our hill and valley will cease to be on top of each other. And we can bring them out a little bit more. As uh flat. Alright. Kind of this is going to kind of come up in here and curve back up and around here to meet up this. Likewise and likewise. Excuse me, maybe I can grab these. Pull them down now. Maybe where that flat part of the ear kind of starts connecting with the head right in between here. I may even just go ahead and either, either decide to go one way or the other with it, maybe that way. Here. We can start welding and connecting and spacing out so we start to get more of an even keel earlobe thing going on yeah. turn it off just to see yeah, we're not doing too bad. We're not doing terribly great, but we're not doing too bad. Just a matter of pushing and pulling these things around now until we get some shape that we like. those two. Okay. Well, we don't create stuff in the perspective view. They can be hard to line up. There we go. And then the valley maybe starts to 
slowly end for our overcut it our ear here. Spit that one around. It turns into a flat surface. Give it here the bridge. And uh there you go. We're getting pretty close. Pull this up. Meet in the middle. And all I gotta worry about now is maybe adding one one more extrude here to really kind of start to flatten that out. So that we've got a place to attach it to the head. You never want to. You never want to have an undercut in this particular area where the ear attaches to the head because it'll, it just doesn't look right. Ours goes in flat from there, and then and then becomes round on the other side. So we can kind of gradually turn these up and even pull out a little ways. Let's get a different color. This uh, purple is getting there. It's a little bit better. A lighter color. We can see what we're doing. And from here, it's all a matter of uh, refining shape. I want my inner ear to match up a little bit more with the roundness of the outside. I'm just pushing and pulling. get that shape that I kind of want now. One, two, maybe all these guys over here we can pull back to start to get that, that earlobe, that dangly piece. And then we can use hold shift and kind of pull those all up. And even start to round the back uh, back part of that ear out, so that we have just kind of a, a solid circle to really truly attach to our head. You might find you want to cut some more edges in, or, or modify the the shape of the ear and that, uh, that's all just a matter of kind of pushing and pulling the vertices now uh, but overall I think we've got uh, something resembling an ear oh, too many, too many, too many, too many, there we go that's why working with mesh smooth on can kinda get you here we go that's our final dangly bit there. We'll pull this out and up front along with probably a little bit of this. And who knows. And that's where our ear starts to connect in with the head and continue on and around. You always import your ear after you're done right into wherever you modeled your character's head and uh, you may need to cut some new edges in or remove some and modify slightly but you can always sew this right onto a character's head by just uh, taking one edible poly and using the attach button
There you go. In here. In here that may need some more shape refinements. But in here, nonetheless. some of these to our benefit. And we can get several different shapes out of that. Singular ear there. Okay.